Hi there, friends. Welcome to this week's Crypto Astrology, where it is a short trip to the moon and I will get you there faster than Elon Musk ever will. So I promise you Elon Musk isn't going to take you to the moon. Um, he is buying Twitter. He is trying to create a nice basket of assets and resources that work nicely together because what would work better with Twitter than then Neuralink and SpaceX, these things all tie nicely together as a monopoly of digital infrastructure. And of course, he's going to promise to put you on a Tesla, send you to the moon, which isn't going to happen. But um, what is going to happen is that free speech will not be improved by Elon Musk owning Twitter. So it doesn't really matter who, peop who says they hate it and what all this tweet storm is because it makes no difference. And uh, Elon Musk is not a man of the people, apparently. I mean, I'm, unfortunately, I'm sorry to break it to you that uh, even those uh, fabulous Tesla mobiles they are worse on the environment than any gas guzzling SUV you might have. So he's all misinformation. Anyway, on to another subject. So this week we have pretty interesting. First of all, we're in eclipse season. All right. This is a big deal. The eclipses are all about revealing hidden information. And man, has it been a topsy turvy one about some information that was recently revealed. So, the thing is, when hidden information secrets are revealed, you get a lot of people who tell you that that's not true, of course, right? So what you can actually find out when this happens is who is the disinformation agent, all right? So there has been some uh, bombshell information from Mike Adams. I highly recommend you go to brighteon.tv or brighteon.com, whatever the name of the site is where his free speech platform is where he did this interview with Dr. Artis, and he talks about the water, and he talks about venom, and is this an issue or not, which I believe it is. I feel strongly that it is, psychically, intuitively. I've done some of the things that some of the other doctors who also agree with Dr. Artis suggest you do for your health to help you, and I've had really good results with some anxiety, some difficult sleeping, some sort of fringe kind of CV types of, you know, manifestation. So there is something going on and there is something that is creating illness in people's bodies. No, I do not believe it is a virus. So this whole conversation has turned into a lot of red herrings, people going down false avenues to distract you from what you can actually do to help yourself. So I did post on that last week and I recommend you can get all that information yourself. Just go to Brighteon and look up the uh, Dr. Artis interviews. Do not look at the sensationalist Stu Peters garbage. That interview is garbage, so don't pay any attention to it. Do look at the interview with Mike Adams, the Health Ranger. It's a three-part interview. It's three hours. It goes into great depth, cites all kinds of information, all kinds of documentation, and is very, very valid. So I highly recommend you educate yourself and follow up on these resources and not just believe someone who says, oh, you know, snake bites is bullshit or someone peed upstream of you. That's misinformation. So be careful of that. So, um, what else? There's just a lot going on from Shanghai information. So this going on in Shanghai. I hope you guys are paying attention uh, to the alternative videos that are coming out out of Shanghai. It is not pretty. Um, and of course, we have the ongoing Russian situation. But the the deal is that this eclipse season is about information coming to the surface. That information is coming to the surface now. We have two eclipses. There's the solar eclipse, which happens at the end of this month, and then the lunar eclipse, which is, you know, the solar eclipse is not this week. It's in another, it's next week, but we feel it really strongly the two weeks in advance and then the three days before. So it's on the 30th. So the 27th to the 30th are going to be pretty intense days for, um, for it's the solar eclipse, right? So that thing's being taken away from view or hidden. There's this feeling with this particular eclipse, which is like, you know, that shell game where they move stuff around and you're trying to figure out where it is and put your dollar, you know, 2010, whatever down to try and make the money. I'm guessing which one, 
it is, and these guys make hundreds of bucks a day, sometimes probably thousands, by tricking people with those little moving the shell around. So that's what's going on right now. Stuff that's coming out is being moved around underneath the shell, underneath these, the, the cups. And so you're trying to figure out which cup has the shell in it. I'm telling you that where there's smoke, there's fire, there's real issue. Go look on Bright Dion, look at that video to get some more like actual information. There's a lot of spin, a lot of confusion, and that's done on purpose, of course. And then after that, we get the lunar eclipse, which is secrets being revealed, information coming to the surface. So we have, we're in for a very bumpy uh, ride for the next couple of weeks, especially in terms of information, which is not new, but also it's going to be affecting all of our supply chain stuff. And this is, um, I've been talking about the nodes moving from Gemini into Taurus, from the Gemini Sagittarius, uh, opposition into the Taurus Scorpio opposition, which is all about what we have and what we can use and what we can do to take care of ourselves. So the more um, self-sufficient, the more uh, you can have your resources in line, the faster, the better. That's what I'm going to say about this because this eclipses season, This these eclipses in the next few weeks are going to cause disruption, all right? They will be causing disruption. It's a good idea to have extra fuel on hand, like an extra gas tank of fuel in case you need it in your garage somewhere. So these are just some suggestions. But having said all that, it's not a terrible week, actually. We do have some uh, pretty decent things going on astrologically so let's take a look at the charts and I'll give you a, a little bit of a deeper view on it so um, you know here we have of course all the planets bunched together in a tight little pattern as we've been seeing for a long time because there's a real lopsided effect going on energetically and in the world and where what we can see is a limited amount of stuff which is what I was saying about that shell game what we're seeing is very little based on what's, you know, being allowed through. So most of stuff is sort of hidden behind where we can't see it. So that's kind of this whole area over here. I don't know if you see my mouse or not, but the whole area with nothing in it is sort of where um, there's a lot going on that we're not actually seeing. So everything over here is just this tight little, you know, it, this is the number one skill of a mus magician, right? The number one skill of a magician is is that don't look at don't look at what this hand's doing over here. Look at what this hand's doing over here. So it's all distraction. This is why the magician card in Tarot, he's pointing at his instruments, he's pointing up at the sky. He's distracting your attention. It's all about where your attention is focused. And so the charts of the day, the charts of the week, the charts of the months, the charts that have been going on for a long time here are all about that distraction element. You're only being shown what they want you to see. So there's only a little bit, only the tip of the iceberg is showing, is, is uh, you know, visible for us to analyze and try and make, infer make decisions based on. So this is, of course, purposefully confusing to all of us. So what else is happening this week? However, it's not terrible. And the reason it's not terrible is because we have this really nice, configuration over here on the um, the descendant, which is the aspect of relationships, and it is the focal point for this whole week, and it's all, it brings in a lot of really nice relationship issues, and that nice relationship uh, information, it's going to be very good for partnerships, friendships, uh, relationships, romantic relationships, one-on-one -on -one dealings of all kinds, also some positive news in the world field of justice um this is pisces and it's very much like the sign of justice is libra but libra and pisces have a really good esoteric relationship so this does bring around some type of justice it's almost like spiritual justice i wouldn't say that you're gonna get you know big headlines of tribunals or anything like that but there's some sense of personal victory overcoming obstacles, overcoming problems, some kind of justice around things that that have not been that easy to put your finger on, but have been in the way or causing distractions or disruptions. So this is like an energetic shift, um, kind of a big one that does provide 
opportunity for us to move forward. And because Venus is on the descendant here, we have very loving, kind uh, types of relationship it, things coming up, if this is helpful to you. But in general, people are going to be kinder and more loving and sweeter in their one-on-one -on -one relationships, especially since um, Venus is getting ready to join up with Neptune, which is pretty much the most loving, sweetest, kindest, most romantic aspect there is. So it's a very nice aspect for romance, for long-term relationships, and that becomes exact next week. It's also good for anything that you might be doing that's a long-term plan, right? Long-term planning, planting things, getting, um, you know, anything long-term that you're doing, uh, especially like getting things into the ground, it's very good for that. Uh, Jupiter is also tied in with this. I talked about it last week. It was exact uh, last week. So I was speaking to members about getting prepared for stuff, but it's still in effect. And Venus joining up with this makes this another really nice week for laying some foundations for long-term planning and for things that you grow, for uh, things that you build, things that are coming out of the earth, uh, things of value, things that you buy that are going to be long-term value. So um, speaking of which, I actually did do a uh, recent new coin recommendation for members, and that's in the members area. That's for all members. Um, I'm going to post an update, a little bit more information on that, because there is some more, and I gave a strategy for it. There's a specific time frame for this, because this is not a forever coin. It's something you want as for a period of time. But also, um, yeah, that's a big deal. And also in the news, we had some very big stories break about um, Ripple XRP, which is, you know, I've been telling everyone forever, this is a cabal coin. This is not something you want to get stuck in long term. And now we just have these news stories coming out about the members of the Federal Reserve going and joining Ripple's board. And there's all this stuff going on. So I will be doing an updated uh, piece about Ripple. And that's coming out in the next few days. So if you want a more updated timeline and some more updated information about Ripple, that's going to be in the members area, um, as well as there's that coin recommendation that I gave to people. But this is also, like I said, a really good week for setting yourself up for these long-term successes. So um, although I'm not going to tell you that this is necessarily your bottom, bottom, or your top, top of any type of moves, it's, uh, it's been a, you know, frustratingly wavy month in crypto. Some people like to trade those small moves, but I'm about the big entry and exit points. And there's no one who's as accurate on that as me. So that's the key here is finding the, the big points for getting in and the big points for getting out. So what do we have else going on this week? We also have there's a nice aspect to the moon's nodes with this Venus-Neptune uh, conjunction, which becomes exact next week, but we feel it this week. This puts us on our soul's path, helps us put us in the direction of where we need to go. Again, the important thing to uh, remember, as I've been saying for weeks, stay away from drama and move towards the calm, the centered, the grounded, the maybe slightly boring things in life that are um, more long-term nurturing, right? So be a little more uh, patient and slow about moves that you might be making and don't move towards the uh, immediate gratification drama energy. Don't get caught up in that. The moon with the, you know, the south node in Scorpio, this is an entire 18-month cycle where being calm, being centered, being grounded, being peaceful and taking care of your physical needs is going to provide huge, huge returns for people who are doing that. Also, it's about land, it's about property, it's about what you own, it's about the things you have, it's about luxury items, and it's about creating a nice life for yourself. So it's highly possible to live outside all the drama of the world, and you will do far better if you are living in that space of calm and self-nurturing. So. There's that, um, and that is also really nice, and it is also making a nice aspect to Neptune. So it's bringing opportunities in for us. There will be a lot of good financial opportunities, opportunities to get tools, uh, resources, things, techniques, things that we might need 
in these coming times to set us up. So that is going on and it is uh, going to bring a lot of information. Once we get into next week, we're going to move into the shadow of Mercury and I'll talk about that as we get when we get there. So make sure you subscribe to this to this channel and like this video, of course, and share. Course. But um, other things that are going on is Pluto is also tied in with this nice pattern. Now it's going to become stronger in the coming weeks, this transformative energy. So new things and big changes are being set into motion right now, but it will take some more weeks and even months for it all to kind of crystallize in a stronger way. In fact, these cycles will be continuing to grow for the next uh, year. So you're going to be seeing a lot of these seeds that you're planting in your life, not just in your garden, but in your life as well. Those seeds are going to start to be growing and producing and turning into plants that are going to flourish and create yield, right? So these things are happening. This is the divine cycle right now is it is a divine cycle of planting. This is the spring. It is the time to plant seeds in all areas of your life. And that includes romance and relationships. Relationships are in really good standing this week. And it's a great uh, time to deepen your relationship with people, to have more important discussions about the future, to look for people who are more in alignment with your values. This is a really powerful time to meet up and make those new connections and actually create those real friends that are going to be the long-term friends that have the same outlook and the same value as you, where you can build something for the future. So there is a lot going on that is very positive in that regard. Chiron I've been talking about for a long time is in Aries. It's gotten to about the middle of Aries. It is providing opportunities for sudden and unexpected changes that bring good people into our lives. Um, um, and, resources, and resources, bringing us resources and joining with other people, opportunities to work with other people. These things will happen out of the blue, suddenly, unexpectedly, uh, just synchronicity. Boom, here's a person who's doing exactly what you need and you get to solve the problem. And if there's anything going on in your life that has legal implications, you can also get a lot of help with that because of all these aspects on the seventh house cusp. This is really helpful to anything related to the law, to justice, to contracts, to legal things of all kinds that you're dealing with. So, and my very, very strong recommendation to you is take care of it all this week. Get everything in motion this week. Button up all the details you can this week. Don't wait until next week because that's when we enter the shadow of Mercury retrograde and anything you start doing during that week, even if there's positive energy still, it's going to take six weeks to get it all resolved, right? If, you're, if you've got stuff, don't put it off. If you have paperwork you need to solve, don't put it off because it could turn into a much bigger problem later when we enter the Mercury retrograde cycle. Right now is a good time to deal with your legal justice issues and your paperwork and your court stuff and your bureaucracy stuff and your red tape. Anything along those lines, you want to set into motion now and it will be putting you in a good position to make it through the Mercury retrograde cycle, which is six weeks. You don't want to have to be delayed six weeks. It's a long period of time that if you can do it quickly ahead of time, do it, front run those things. So that's what's going on for this week. Um, I would say absolutely try and make a lot of progress with any gardening, any um, new technology you found, any um, setting yourself up, just try and set yourself up and, and put yourself in a more self-sufficient position. Try and do as much of that as you haven't gotten done already. Try and do more of that this week. I know many people on this channel have probably prepared a lot, but this is a good time. I mean, I've got some really uh, resources I haven't found from anyone else that I've given to people, resources around water. I have another one around vegetable gardening. It's a really fast yield, but as soon as I get the link, I don't have it yet. I haven't been able to find it from these people, but I'm going to share this with the members. I try and bring people stuff that cuts through all the garbage, cuts through all the noise, and just gets you the really hardcore, actionable information. So that means I'm not trying to throw you in seven different directions every week. I'm trying to have you you know, reserve your energy and use it when it's really needed and give you those 
key lightning strikes where you're going to make way more gains and make way more progress in your life than if you're running around in circles doing a bunch of stuff every five minutes. You don't need to do that. You need to use your energy in a key way in order to plant those seeds that are going to produce the most for you, right? And that is really well supported with this week's astrology. So that's it. Go plant some seeds. I'm wishing you all the best. And if you want to join me, please come visit me on my website and join the members area. We would love to have you. That's it. Have a great weekend. I wish you guys all the best. Namaste. Bye-bye.